definitely. Well, what Jin? What is the future for you? You know, it's just you don't have the title with you anymore, but you're coming off a win. So, like, are you still with Invicta, or are you looking to go somewhere else? Like, what's the what's the plan? So, um, with a win, I secured the next title shot. Mm -hmm. Although I don't think that they really have another contender. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of a weird situation because I did win a five round fight, but, um, so if I, if I wanted to fight for the title again, I would get the first shot. Um, but like I said, I don't think there's another real contender, but I've also, um, you know, kind of been thinking a little bit about maybe moving up. It's like, I, you know, I met my goal at one Oh five. Um, it is a difficult cut and you know, I'm going to be 35 next month. Um, and I've actually um, had some, you know, health issues with my neck. And the the doctor was saying, uh, like, all of my discs in my neck are kind of dried out and dehydrated. And he's like, the, the extreme weight cutting is not helping. Um, you know, you're not doing yourself any favor by dehydrating yourself doing these extreme weight cuts. Um, so, you know, it's it's becoming, you know, it's, it's affecting my health at this point. And so that's kind of something to consider, you know, I, I missed by, you know, 0.8, which still is like atom weight limit, but just not championship weight. So it's like I, I was still close enough that I could probably continue to do it. But like I said, I've met my goals at 105 and it's becoming an issue where it could start affecting my health. So, um, you know, I've kind of been toying with the idea of maybe moving up. I'm not I'm still kind of on the fence. Um, so I haven't made any kind of definite decision, but it's definitely I've been thinking about 115 a lot more this time off is probably, you know, for the best. I had like, uh, four, four bulging discs in my neck. So, you know, this, this time off is probably, you know, actually good for me. How long has that been ailing you the neck? Um, it started, uh, last fall and I wasn't really, I was having a lot of pain in my shoulder and I was having like burning, numbing, numbness and tingling all in my left arm. Um, and it was pretty constant. And, you know, I went through the one fight camp and I had to pull out because I, I got cut um, right before the fight. And then I, I went through the last fight camp with that, like the whole time. And, um, you know, finally afterwards had a little time off to get it checked out. And um, there's like two mildly bulging discs, one moderate and one severe. So just kind of taking it easy, like trying to stay in shape, but not doing anything too crazy right now. Well, if you have a a healthy neck and and if you do move up to 115 that is a a world of possibilities of matchups up there you know what i mean like the ufc of course those three letters come to mind everybody's always talking about jin and how she might do over there in, in the ufc right and i'm pretty sure they have interest in you coming through yeah definitely something um <laughs> You know, that's interesting because, like I said, they're, they're running out of contenders at 105 and my last three fights have been rematches. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't want to keep the same people over and over. Um, I, I will I will disclose this like and it, it was, you know, a very, very low percentage chance that it may have happened. Um, but with Rose pulling out against uh, Jessica Andrade, um, I, I we spoke about it. And so we talked to Jen's manager and was like. Tell Jen to send, send the word to Mick Maynard. We'll uh, we'll take that fight on a week's notice. I mean, it, it wasn't going to go through. Jen's Jen's not in fight shape, but the opportunity to fight a number one contender fight immediately, even though it's on a week notice against someone like that's like how do you how do you not go after something like that, even given the times? But you know, she threw her name out there. Mick Maynard knew about it. That's a and that's great. And so if one fifteen's it, at least at least her name is is on his mind that she's actively looking um to to move over to the ufc or or possibly moving over to the ufc well you know i i would like to see it you know I, i'm yeah. pretty sure a lot of fans they've been you know you know if you go online and social media they're always talking about Jin and like her how would she do at 115 in the ufc or you know the ufc needs an atom weight division and it doesn't seem like they're gonna make one anytime soon so oh i was just gonna say we really kind of started thinking about it um a couple of fights ago, but mm -hmm. I just kept hanging on thinking that the UFC was going to add the Adam White division. And of course I wanted to be the champion when they did that so that I would be, you know, one of the front runners for the title immediately. Um, so I just kept hanging on and kept hanging on. 
And we kept pushing back the idea, you know, because the weight cuts were getting harder and harder. And I'm like, no, I can keep doing this. Like, I want to be the champion. I keep hearing that they're going to start it any any time now. So I want to be the champion when that happens. Um, so we'll see. You know, I hung, I hung on for an extra year, year and a half waiting for that. And it uh, didn't happen. So, but. You know, you're sitting sitting tight, you know, off a win, so it's all good, right? Now, as a coach, would you want her to go up to 115? Yeah, I can. I, I know that she can com- compete with the girls. I know that she could compete with compete in the top five. Um, He's actually the one that's like been pushing for it, and I'm like, no, no, I'm gonna stay at Adam Wade a little longer. Yeah, it's it's like so after after this last win, um, uh, her jujitsu and my jujitsu coach, um we three sat down and we had dinner and we had a few, a few hours and we kind of hashed some stuff out and we talked about the possibility of Jen moving up. And so what we did was a breakdown of all the fighters in the top 10 in the UFC at 115. How do we beat them? And it was like, all right, game plan here, game plan here, game plan here, you know, loose game planning. It wasn't what wasn't super in depth. You start getting to those, those top three and you're looking at, you know, uh, how do you say her name? Weili? Weili Zhang. And, um, and Joanna and and Andraj and Rose and and Tatiana Suarez will go to top five. Like they all present much, much more. They would be a harder game to devise. Or, uh, it'd be harder to devise a game plan to beat. Um, it, it, at least for for at this initial time. But we we did that, and I was like, listen, you, I've seen you grapple against um, a couple of the girls that are in the top ten. Um, I've seen how big you are compared to like even Jessica Andrews, like you're, you're just completely massive. You're so much bigger than, than she is. You're bigger than Rose. You have a longer reach than most, all these girls that are already there at the top 15. I was like, and Jen, you have 13 professional fights. Eight of those 13 professional fights have been championship fights. Six of those have been world championship fights. Nobody can say that. So I was like, when we, when you get in there and that cage door closes, it's another it's another day in the office for you. It's not going to be yeah. There will be nerves and stuff like that because it is the UFC and yeah, Bruce Buffer screaming your name. But um, yeah, I firmly believe as a coach that she could get in there and make an immediate impact. <laughs>